picked it, huh? Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you kind of last minute uh, jumping into a car ride with us. Um, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, you know, introduce yourself, who you are, you know, and what you're doing? Yeah, so my name is Dana. I'm 33 years old. I'm from Israel. <laughs> I, we keep we keep getting the, uh, the, the, I, the I'm not trying to do the dating app <laughs> questions. Uh, you know, I, I'm just general profile. Uh, you know? It's a problem today's, yeah. you know, application. Yeah. So I've heard you were 33. We had another one who was 31 <laughs> earlier today. Maybe we um, can meet. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I got to introduce you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm based in Tel Aviv, grew uh -huh. up in Jerusalem, and I work in uh, Day Tree. It's a startup preventing misconfiguration in Kubernetes. Cool. I'm doing like business... Uh, business development partnership but the main uh, my heart is with the community leader okay um, so i work with influencers from all over yeah and then when i arrived to to the kubernetes world i was like shocked starting to learn online with all those amazing influencers mm -hmm. and i was like i think i should start going to meetups mm -hmm. start to hear and getting more professional but so what what Kind of like why Kubernetes? Like what brought you to that kind of particular community in the first place? So actually, like um, I used to work with technologies in the army and before mm -hmm. that, and I was doing AI before that mm -hmm. and UX UI, and I was looking for something that will make a big impact uh -huh. in the technology world, in the the history of technology. And right. I'm sure that like Kubernetes is that thing, like it's a next big thing it's already right right and so i got to the meetups and i was shocked not so many like maybe two three ladies sitting in the crowd no speakers yeah and then i felt like i think i can make an impact because i'm a people's person and i love to organize stuff yeah um, as i told you i'm part of the burning man community was doing a foundation parties. Well, I didn't, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm not that familiar with Burning Man, and I didn't realize that there's, um, there are other Burning Mans besides the one in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So is that is it Israel or is it a bunch of other countries as well? Or uh, it's called Midburn. Oh, okay. It's Israeli Burning Man. Yeah. All right. And uh, so yeah, taking part of those type of events, you need to, to to make an an, an event. Uh huh. And it's kind of like operations, like a, making a conference like I did a month ago. Yeah. And with our CNCF Israel group. Um, so either way, I got into this world uh, by wanting to affect and to bring the, the ladies' voice. Uh, I thought that I saw around me a lot of ladies like programmer, DevOps. There is a big DevOps leaders uh, women group. Uh -huh. I was trying to get them to talk and they don't want to. Right. So right. slowly I'll start, uh, I call it hunting, <laughs> the ladies all over. Yeah. Even now in the conference, I'm like, you're Israeli, yeah. you're lady, yeah. you're You want to give a talk? You want to give a talk? Please yeah. come to our meetups, GitHub, CNCF, I'm in those both communities, organizers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and actually I managed this year in the GitHub user group, we're the biggest GitHub community in the world. Oh wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and we have every month a meetup, and we managed to have every month one man, one lady. Oh nice. It's, yeah. it's sensational. That's, that's hard to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I run a, a conference, it's, it's a small, like four or five hundred people conference uh, every year in uh, the US that's based on a conference in the Czech Republic, but um, called devconf.us, but the charter, like the goal of the conference is for kind of new speakers, um, but you kind of have to like also like offset that with some big names so that you can uh, get people to show up to the conference. Uh, but you know, we have we have very strong, like we have intendee uh, coaching, we have speaker coaching, you know, uh, just to try to bring more, you know, make it a more open community. And a big part of it is how do we get more underrepresented communities involved in particularly open source because we're a little biased but software in general right um and so yeah i i, I share the difficulty with so you in other fields you won't feel this the, the same sensation in israel mm -hmm. um but anyhow we made a big conference the first kcd in israel yeah our cncf yeah. community is already doing meetups for four years so we decided we should go for it and even in that process in the committee i was like we're gonna have half of the committee ladies. The beginning is saying, no, oh, one lady is enough. I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. no way. And then I use my community contacts, like getting the 
first keynote, Lori LaRusso from JFrog, she became a CNCF marketing chair. Ah, so cool. to get yeah. like, and to get local ladies as well. Yeah. So we got like 45% ladies. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of those things that, uh, you know, part of uh, what I, I try to help do, right, is I, I want more people who don't look like me in my community. Yes, um, but it's because uh, one of the things I think people, you know, there's the kind of straight up obvious kind of equity component, right? But I also think people don't realize that unless we bring multiple viewpoints to building like software, you're not, you're going to have huge gaps in your software, in the quality of it, in the, you know, things it does well and things it doesn't do well. Because because you're you're just providing one perspective, and so I think it's it's like not only like from an equity perspective, but it's also that you make better product, uh, and so and you know the only way to be able to support that is you put you know like women on stage or whatever you know you need people who are leaders in the community who also look like the people you want to participate in the community. You know? Yeah, I think the tech world already on got the understanding that you can't have a team with only like tech people. You yeah. need the diversity. Today, if you go right. to Tel Aviv, like half of the companies would have, I went to law school seven uh -huh. years ago. I have a, a doctor, like you would have so many types of other, not programmers. Right, right. Getting involved and getting like the, and you can feel it when you're doing like a, a business or product, a, workflow like when you sit in a in a room and think with people like the different types of ideas people have yeah, it's important yeah yeah and like I said I think you end up with with better quality stuff you know yeah. at the end of the day um, so that's cool so what uh, you know what do you think is is kind of next like what are you seeing that um, you know you're gonna be able to try to build on uh, from that work uh, for, you know, I don't know, the next conference, you know, are you, you going to bring Kubernetes to Burning Man? You know, who knows? <laughs> uh, that's funny. I talked to one of the leaders. She was like, let's make a booth. You know? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you can't awesome. sell anything, you <laughs> yeah, know, no yeah. money. Right. So she's like, okay, yeah. I don't know. We can give out stickers. That's, yeah. uh, that's all I the engineers really care. Stickers. You know, People loved it. Stickers. It's the best stickers yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I think that I know that in the last KCD, Mm -hmm. My target was like bringing in a, a diversity and getting in the the green conference in. We were the mm. first green conference ever in Israel. Oh, that's interesting. It well, it cost a lot. Well, only yeah. have two places you can throw up all those uh, disposable. Uh, um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like three hours away from Tel Aviv. Right. So it cost right. a lot of money. Yeah. And actually, the the knowledge and understanding of green stuff in Israel is very recycling is mm. very slow mm. very slow uh, so it's something that is super important for me and yeah. I feel like I want to get it into the community like in the meetups not to have the, the plastic cups mm -hmm. and all the stuff because we're making like two meetups a month it's like 250 people right it's like drinking. material amount yeah. of stuff yeah. yeah even in a conference it's yeah. like 450 people for free Free uh, like uh, types of uh, breakfast, dinner, and yeah, drinking yeah. after, and yeah, we um and we actually have a project. Um, so I do kind of two things at the university, right? So one thing is I teach some classes, but I also uh, help um, drive the projects that the student teams are on. And one of the projects this semester is called Recyclopedia. Um, and because one of the challenges a lot of people have with kind of like recycling is like okay, is this thing recyclable and which trash can does it go yeah. in, right? And so they're trying to build a, an app that will kind of tell you the answer to that. So you can kind of say, okay, I got a Starbucks coffee cup. Where do I put it, you know? Um, and uh, I just think it's kind of a neat little concept, you know? Um, and we'll, you know, hopefully they'll they'll build something that, that's kind of cool and maybe usable. Um, I didn't even know that if you buy like green, uh, green uh, cups, yeah. And you don't take them to a special place yeah, yeah. to make a compost from it. They won't yeah, actually get recycled. Yeah. Yep. So it won't affect badly the world like plastic. Right. But nobody knew about it. Nobody knows yeah. about it in Israel. It's so I want to I would say a lot of that's true in the US. I mean, you know, like I try to be relatively conscious about it. Um, and I know that I throw the wrong, you know, trash in the wrong bin uh, sometimes because I don't know that. But you have you know, different bins. We yeah. Don't have oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah we right. Don't have right. It. So, yeah. It I, makes it even harder. So I really want to 
Yeah, some reason the uh, music <laughs> randomly comes on in this car. We haven't quite it's figured out why. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's smarter than us, I think, is what it boils down to. Um, so anyway, yeah, to bring this the green conferences in, mm -hmm. trying to kind to of accidentally impart, uh, you know, some some green awareness into the uh, yeah, goers, cause, right? Yeah, because I was yeah. talking to the other uh, community leaders. We're not a big country in Israel, and. They were coming to me, actually, I have a few people writing to me after the conference, like, man, we would love to learn about the process. And we have only one company in Israel that does it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, only well, one. Well, it makes it uh, easy to find a vendor. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah, you don't, have to, you don't have a lot of choices to have to deal with. And I even thought about taking it one step forward and um, try to make a special place in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Like, to collaborate with the municipality, Right, to actually like build a, an event site for it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, we should, we should. Tel Aviv is like very Western, so. Right. Yeah, I think that's, uh, it's funny with uh, the, when you, when you can kind of use like a conference or other venue as kind of like a, like a accidental uh, support for, you know, um, things like environmentalism or whatever is really useful because I think people don't realize that you that it's you know kind of right there it teaches them something about it even if they're that's not why they're there you know um, and, he, and even now in the conference when people try to give me some uh, information that is printed I'm like uh, yeah no yeah, thanks and yeah. in our conference I ask not to have it so a small impact can help as well. Right. Well, plus they're often, um, you know, single use, like as in, like, it's just for that one event, um, you know, which can be super hard. Um, yeah, there's birds. What do you want? I'm not <laughs> driving over a pigeon. Um, yeah, I tend to have, doing these car interviews, I seem to have problems with birds. Uh, we had a bunch of them in Detroit. There were a lot of geese uh, here. I've had multiple pigeons like try to like <laughs> walk under the car wheels. Um, like I, I really don't want to drive over you, um, but uh, the people behind me disagreed. So, yeah. So if you if you heard honking on the uh, on the <laughs> video, that would be why. Um, so yeah, I am definitely not driving fast enough for the neighborhood drivers. I can tell you that much. Yeah. But, um, so uh, we were talking about, uh, so do you think you'll, I mean, I presume you'll want to do another KCD. Yeah. When do you think you're going to go for like a year from now? Or are you going to go maybe sooner than that? What do you think is going to happen? I think we'll, we'll, take it, it, we'll take it a year. Mm -hmm. I worked for six months. Uh, to, to get it to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And it was volunteering. So I had no private life in right. that time. Yeah. Uh, I was really enthusiastic doing that, and yeah. I was, and and I have some conclusions how how to make I it can, better next time. Yeah, uh, yeah but or how to for, for my right to make personal, it simpler next time. Yeah, uh, using we had a lot of uh, volunteers. People after the event asked to volunteer, so mm -hmm. to make them more involved. Right. Uh, this is something that yesterday we had a um, KCD global event of all the local communities. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to the, it was very interesting to talk to the Italian guys and yeah. to the guys from here, like what are their conclusions. Yeah. So uh, the Italian team, there are like 50 people. It's like yeah. a micro community inside. So yeah, it can be harder as a project manager. I yeah. know how hard it can be to have multiplied like people in charge. Right, right. Uh, but once you get the people that you know they can take it uh, and they really do it from the bottom of their heart. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, what we found was, uh, you know, starting earlier was uh, a big help. Um, you know, that, you know, it's like if you can, if you can add some time to the window that it makes yes. it a lot less painful. Um, and then also, what we did was adopt a, uh, you know, if you want to add this feature to the conference, we are excited to have you do that, but you do that, right? If like, you can't just make a suggestion mm -hmm. and then expect somebody else to yes. do it. Right. Um, and so we got a lot of really cool ideas out of that and, and like, like action, like we ended up doing because one of the times we did the event virtually, um, you know, during the pandemic and, but we wanted people to feel like they were in Boston where it takes mm -hmm. place. So we actually had, um, we took a whole, we got a whole bunch of people to actually take little video clips around Boston and then we did a virtual tour of Boston for the conference. Nice. And, but that was like purely somebody's idea and they were like, oh, we could do this. And we're like, yeah, go for it. You know? Um, so it's, uh, it's always kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, we had the, uh, now, uh, 
three days ago, a meetup, GitHub user group meetup, and I had like, uh, there are a lot of Ukraine Jewish people who ran away. Mm. So some of them came up to me and said, mm, it would be a great idea because it's in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So maybe you will have like uh, online sub subtitles. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. one of the guys in the community told me we were like four people organizing it. So he's like, great idea. Tell him to do that. Yeah, yeah. And another lady told me now, he's like, yeah, great, amazing. They're part of the community. Tell them they they can promote it. Right, right. And it's true. We need to look at it as a community. And people should understand it's part of it. Uh, we try to, to pass the message that uh, being part of the community is speaking, uh, organizing like me or whatever, but being part of it is being a little bit active whenever you can. Yeah, yeah. And bringing your ideas without any bureaucracy. Right. And um, yeah, you can do anything you would dream of. And now I'm trying to promote the women's swag, actually. Yeah. Uh because -huh. we never get anything that is really dedicated for us. Well, one of the things uh, we started doing, or when I was working at Red Hat, we started doing was actually um, doing, you know, kind of actually doing a lot of the shirts, for example, like fitted or going to other other things that don't have to be sized, you know? Um, so I thought that was a really good trend, uh, you know, and you're seeing a lot of organizations doing that, you know, like doing socks, for mm -hmm. example, which I think is super cool. Um, so, you know, although my kids end up stealing the socks pretty much across the board. buying right? socks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's always kind of neat. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, one thing, I, we were talking about this earlier, but we didn't really talk about it uh, during this discussion, which was kind of like, um, so this kind of community, you getting kind of involved with Kubernetes or whatever, is really kind of what brought you to this, like the job you're doing and everything, right? Well, um, one led to, each other, to another. Like, yeah. I started working in the tree, mm -hmm. studying Kubernetes, getting into my role, going to meetups. Two of the founders are uh, the founders of the communities as well. Oh, okay. One of the yeah. founders is the community user, the GitHub user group, and the second one is CNCF, Shimon Tools, uh -huh. CEO. So it took some time that, you know, they told me, Dana, how come you're not getting in? And I was like, yeah. I don't want to get too pushy. Right, it, right. It will happen whenever it needs to happen. And it really did. Like, it happened slowly yeah. and... I met the really the right people. The, all of them are here now yeah, in, yeah. in KubeCon. Yeah. Met them on Zoom and got the, and, the, and the off right. it went. Yeah, I think that's um, one of the things. It, it's something I, I've been trying to get like students to do. It's like you know, I went to a Kubernetes uh, meetup in Boston the other day, and we didn't promote it very well, but like. One of the things I really, because I think the students are a little concerned about going to one of these meetups kind of alone, you know, even if they're with a cluster of other student friends. Um, and so I was kind of like, you know, maybe I can go to the Kubernetes meetup and like bring a bunch of students with me. Um, because I like I don't think they realize how many opportunities there are if you, especially in the open source world, where if you kind of can start to get involved in the community around that open source system, whatever thing that you find interesting, there's a whole mess of companies that are around it that will often be looking to hire you or like that's support true. you working in that community. And if it's something you like, you know, that's a, that's a really great way yeah. to get a job. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I highly encourage it. Uh, and, uh, you know, in your success story of that example, right? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I met some, uh, a CEO, some VC mm -hmm. in Israel in the last meetup, and he was telling me like, I was like, what's his, what is your LinkedIn? He's like, no, I'm, I like this type of talk, yeah. like the the elevator talk. Yeah. This is how you get a job in my company. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, this is how you get to know the 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 real connection. You right. get in the meetup and you meet the people and you hear them talking. Even watching on YouTube, it's not the same. Right. As somebody that got into the Kubernetes world. Uh, and I'm ADHD, <laughs> so it's hard to sit and watch <laughs> YouTube. But right. once you see someone like on stage and enthusiastic about it and like passionate about it, and yeah, it's I would say I think we talked about it uh, earlier that this is the real Burning Man of the world, the real shared uh, information, like the open source. It's for someone who got got it into it two years ago, I was like, yeah. 
wow, that's that's the reason technology is so fast. Everything goes so fast. It's, it's all the those, reason of the share information. Right. And, and all like you kind of all perspectives are kind of enabled and supported and like, you know, and, and there's a, there's a, a well understood. And this is one of the things that's so hard about open source is actually like knowing how to make it so that all the contributors can contribute uh, is actually not easy. Um, yeah. You know, and Kubernetes, I think in the CNCF have, have kind of figured that out. And, you know, they come from a lot of experience in other projects about doing that. Um, but I think that's one of the things that people don't realize is the amount of work that's involved in making a contributor community like work and be accessible and open and, you know, able to contribute new stuff to it. Um, and, and, you know, I think you benefited from it and you're trying to give back in that same vein. But I think like, especially engineers don't realize how hard that part of it is because, you know, a lot of engineers have never run their own open source project. And so they don't see the, the difficulty with, with doing that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's super fascinating. Um, but I think maybe we, uh, we could kind of end the interview there and uh, we could, uh, unless there was anything else you wanted to add. Um, so regarding the open source, I would just say that uh, in our company, the tree, we have five star uh, uh, project and I was managed like I was managing when I arrived the flow, the workflow mm -hmm. by answering fast and getting all the issues uh, like to, yeah. to handle all the open source project like properly. And yeah, that's insane. And <laughs> again, I would say it's very naive. Yeah. And all the DevOps and the developers who hear me saying that are think I'm super cute, but seeing someone from Australia like saying to you, hey man, you need that button in your in your product and someone else from yeah. India getting it fixed like it's it's unexplainable. Super powerful. Yeah. Unexplainable yeah. without any money. It's all our developers at work. This is how I understood the, the meaning they're like yeah yesterday I I was uh, getting the issue to Argo CD and like getting super excited from it like yeah. really yeah um, no it's 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 really powerful and it really uh, you know I think you know like everyone you know everyone's always looking for communities of you know like-minded individuals or people they can you know that they're connected to somehow uh, and I, you know I think the open source world just kind of supports that you know it's it's it, really nice and it supports even a bigger picture, if you look at it, now we have like uh, two companies uh, sponsoring our uh, um, our community. And mm -hmm. this is part of understanding. I, now in the KubeCon, I think a lot of uh, big organization understanding they, they should invest more money in open source or in the community. Of course, they have their own uh, benefits. Agenda, from it. Yeah, 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 for but that's business okay. agenda, yeah. but it brings back to the community so much. Right. Right. And so I think everybody, it's a win-win situation. Right. And that, yeah, as long as, you know, as long as everyone's kind of incentives are aligned, uh, you know, it's not bad having a, a goal, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely a fan. Um, and it's it's just it's so interesting because, um, you know, you've been exposed to it this way. I've been around the software industry for a long time now. Um, but uh, I was talking to somebody earlier, one of the earlier interviews, who's kind of uh, kind of grew up more the way I did, like with, you know, kind of building everything from scratch in the early days and stuff. And we're just so both astonished about like how open source has has made it um, because it used to be when we did development, we were like literally banned from using open source software in the early days. And now it's like, you know, the de facto. Uh, and it's just it's so crazy. Um, but it's been so good, I think, you know. Yeah, even in Israel, you can feel it even in the army. I'm officer in uh, like communication side. Mm -hmm. So I was doing radio, AM, FM for years. And then we arrived yeah. and the cloud is in and the computer are in and like, wow, yeah. you have DevOps guys in your team <laughs> in the army and and units that you didn't have it before. Like, so, right. and right. it makes everything faster, better, right. even more secure. Right. And in Israel, yeah. it's, it's a matter of life or death so it's yeah well i mean you know in, generally in speaking army, military yeah. Yeah. kind of feel that way um you know so i would say that that is not uncommon um so kubernetes in the idf as well so it's yeah, yeah amazing yeah um, cool well again thank you so much for joining us we really appreciate it um, thank you and uh you know especially kind of last minute uh and uh you know hopefully we'll see you around in the community and you know thank more you. in israel
And if you ever uh, come to Israel, you yeah. know ladies who want to talk in yeah. our meetups. Right, right. Um, and add yeah. on LinkedIn. I used to, uh, I actually had, I knew uh, a few Red Hatters uh, who were in the Tel Aviv office um, who, uh, you know, might be good candidates. So, you know, I'll, I'll push them your way. Amazing. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah.